Wakala. Hi there! Okay, so today I'm very excited to get started decorating my balcony a little bit for Christmas. Right now I'm getting ready to go out to my parents' farm and search for some greenery that I can snip and bring back some like branches of and put in my rail, like balcony rail planter baskets that I have. We're gonna go out and see what we can find out there. I expect there's mostly just like Eastern red cedar, which is um, actually kind of juniper. I don't really think there's any like pines that I am aware of, but we'll see what's out there. Um, we don't live in a super like naturally pine filled area. The things I'm taking with me, I do have a pair of pruners um, to cut branches. I'm also taking just some reusable bags to hopefully carry branches back with me in because I do kind of have to go on a little bit of a hike. Also a pair of gloves I would recommend with the Eastern Red Cedars. They're kind of, kind of pokey um, since they are like that juniper type material. If you've ever pruned a juniper bush, you know what I'm talking about. They just, they poke you in the worst way. So um, some gloves and we'll be good to go. I am also excited later today to try to make some Mexican hot chocolate in a crock pot. I've been wanting to try kind of like a spicy hot chocolate recipe with like cinnamon um, for a while. So I'm really excited to try this one. And I really also have just been wanting to use my crock pot more. I feel like I have it and I don't have a lot of like accessory appliances, but I do have a crock pot. So um, I do wanna try some holiday beverage, like crock pot beverage recipes this season. And this is the first one that we're gonna try. So stick around for that as well. Here we go. Here is our first specimen. on it how pretty definitely want to get some of those to work in oh, and look at these aren't those berries pretty I think those might be native coral berry i don't know how well yeah see these fall off really easily so i think let me see i just don't want to take something that if it's going to get bumped you know it's going to fall apart and i do think i have some old um like berry picks stored away that i can use so I think I'd be better just leaving these for the wildlife. But here's another another cedar. <laughs> Next day, I am out here having one last look at my rail baskets, hay racks, whatever you want to call them. Um, look at my poor little pansy. They did get pretty torn up from the cold weather and a little bit of snow that we had last week, but the leaves actually still look pretty good. Everything else, of course, is not doing so hot. So next, I'm just going to tear everything out of here. Um, I am going to compost all of these plants, but I will put them in a trash bag just to help transport them to the farm. But it's nice to have one last look here. I really enjoyed these planters during the fall. They were beautiful. But now let's make them beautiful for winter. I 
think I might actually save <laughs> these flamingos and I may actually use them in one of the baskets, maybe. Another item I have here that I'll be using on the um, baskets are these landscape staples. I was really lucky my dad actually had some of these at, um, out at the shop and then he let me grab a handful of them. So that was very fortunate. I know you can buy them though at like Home Depot, Lowe's. There's probably not as many out right now, but usually if you go out to where they have like, um, like weed barrier fabric and things like that, they usually have these staples pretty close by. I think that these will be helpful in making sure that the greenery I have actually stays in the baskets. I'm just a little bit concerned because the baskets are pretty shallow and I am on the fourth floor. <laughs> so I really don't want anything to like fall out, um, especially not a lot at a time and potentially like land on somebody below. Um, and we kind of do get some winds like coming down this little corridor of buildings. So I'm gonna use these. I have way more surely than I think I'll need, but I also want to be pretty generous with using them just to be safe. So landscape staples. <laughs> I don't think this is a big problem, but it's a little bit of a problem. Um, the baskets are still pretty frozen. So we got some super, super cold weather last week maybe, and it really hasn't warmed back up since then. I mean, the last couple of days it's gotten into like the 50s. So I was really hoping they'd be thawed out, but they're kind of frozen. So I'm just going to heat up some water in the kettle on the stove. And while that's heating up, I'm gonna kind of sort through the materials I have and see what I wanna use in the baskets as far as picks go. Um, but then right before I do each one, I think I'm gonna pour some hot water into the soil, hopefully just to kind of melt things enough that I can actually poke things into the baskets. Okay, here you can see I have a couple of limbs in there, poked down into the soil. Now I'm just taking a landscape staple and I'm just pushing it into the soil until it's kind of tight, just to hold everything in. This is kind of the green bed I have right now. I'm gonna add some more staples. And after I put greenery in all of them, then we'll come back and add the pretty stuff, like the pine cones, some of the pretty picks, maybe some berries. I have just enough of these. I can put one gold ball in each one, so we'll probably work those in. Okay, let's have a look at all of the greenery. They're nice and full. 
and we may add a couple more pieces after we get the um, other decorative parts in, but we will see. pine cones that actually had picks on the end that I could do three in each basket. I think they already look so pretty. So now I think we'll come in with the berries and then we'll do some of the glitzy stuff. Not gonna lie, the mess I made, I think took more out of me cleaning it up than doing the planters themselves. <laughs> I'm not the neatest, the neatest um, floral arranger gardener person, but that's okay. Um, but I do have them done. You can kind of see here in a row. Let's have a close up look. to try this Mexican hot chocolate recipe. Um, I've never made Mexican hot chocolate. I've ordered it maybe just like one time from a cafe somewhere. I don't really remember where. I just feel like I tried it once. But I'm kind of excited. I do have some ingredients laid out, so I'm going to go through them right now. Okay, let's go through the ingredients I have here. So I do have some cocoa powder, cinnamon, some ground nutmeg, chili powder, which I was kind of surprised that this is what the like spice kick was. I was expecting it to be like cayenne pepper, um, which I also have, but I was kind of surprised it was chili powder because yes, um, it has chili pepper, and it just says spices, like what kind of spices? Salt and garlic, which I kind of thought, that's kind of strange to be with chocolate, right? I don't know. But I'm gonna use this because that's what the recipe says to use. I'm just, I'm feeling a little skeptic, if that makes sense. <laughs> we also have, I have some salt here, but I'm not actually sure, especially if this has salt in it. I don't want it to be like salty, but I have some salt here. Sweetened condensed milk. Um, I have some chocolate here. So I do have a bar of dark chocolate and then I have a bar of milk chocolate. I don't think I'll need to use both of them, but I'm, I guess this is only 49% um, dark. So that's, that's not like super, super dark. So maybe I'll just use this one and not the milk chocolate. I'll have to think about that. Um, and then in addition, we will need a little bit of water um, in this bowl, which you'll watch me do, um, to basically turn the cocoa powder into a liquid. 
and we'll also be using some milk. Here we go. So step one, first I have this just little bowl, you can barely see it has some hot water in it. I don't think it really matters how much hot water you use, you just need enough so that you can um, dissolve a tablespoon of the cocoa powder and like stir it up really well so that it's a liquid. So we're gonna do that now. Now, I also would like to acknowledge that I don't necessarily think that this Mexican hot chocolate is, um, authentic. <laughs> I always thought that what made Mexican hot chocolate, Mexican hot chocolate had to do more with the kind of chocolate that um, was used to make it. I was under the impression that in Mexico and Central America, um, there the chocolates that they have to make like drinks like this are a little bit different than what we have here. That's something I probably need to actually research a little bit more and I could be totally off base. So, um, you know, take what I say with a grain of salt. But I don't necessarily think that in Mexico they are putting chili powder or even cayenne pepper <laughs> into their hot chocolate. So um, I hope that doesn't bother anyone, but I do think this is more of a like Mexican inspired hot chocolate and simply call that because it has this unique kick of chili powder and cinnamon and that kind of a thing. So just putting that out there. Next is basically adding all of the ingredients into the crock pot here. So it does call for four ounces of bittersweet chocolate. This package is 5.29. So I'll probably just snap off the last little section of chocolates and put the rest in. That's gotta be about four ounces, right? <laughs> um, I don't think this is the kind of recipe you have to be super precise on. I do have my cocoa powder um, slurry here, so we're ready to go. Okay, so I did make one change. The recipe called for four cups of whole milk. Um, I currently have 2% milk, but I do have some half and half. So I added two cups of 2% milk and then two cups of half and half. So <laughs> it should be pretty um, decadent. The recipe also calls for just um, half a can of sweetened condensed milk. Um, I used probably a little over half, but I do still have some. Um, sweetened condensed milk is also really good in um, coffee creamer, especially if you like kind of um, thin it out a little bit with half and half or just a little bit of milk. Um, it's also really good like in oatmeal. So definitely not gonna throw this out. We'll use it in something tis the season. So um, I'm just gonna stir this up now and put it on high for just maybe like an hour. We'll see, as long as it takes the chocolate to get all melty and for everything to get nice and hot. So I did go back and check the actual recipe and it says to cook it on low for two hours. So that's what I'm starting with. So it's called Mexican hot chocolate because it's supposed to be the kind of chocolate that it uses, right? Yeah. 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 But this one, it's not the kind of chocolate, it's because it has um, chili powder in it. That doesn't, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> oh no. 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 Wakala. Wakala. So it's it's not authentic to Central America. <laughs> uh, no creo. Okay. No creo. Well, we'll see how it is. <laughs> okay, I think it is pretty much done. I kept it on low for about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes, and then I did turn it up to high just because I'm kind of impatient. And I've had it on high for maybe 30 minutes. Um, I also stirred it a couple of times, which I think was a good move. There is a little bit sticking to the sides. Maybe that wouldn't happen if I kept it on low, but I don't know, it probably would still happen. But um, I taste it a little bit. It's pretty freaking delicious but let's put some up into a cup, um, into a mug, and give it a proper try. This one's for you. Careful, careful. Great. 
I love the color of it. So one thing I think um, would be nice, um, I don't have like a mini crock pot, um, like the smaller size, it's really nice for like dips and things like that. I think this would be great in a mini crock pot, at least this um, portion of it, because you could serve it better with like a ladle. In the big crock pot, it's just a little too shallow to like properly serve in a ladle. So I could see that being kind of frustrating for people at like a big gathering. Uh, you could probably also double the recipe if you were really gonna have a lot of people there though. Um, but yeah, use a mini crock pot if you have one. Now we're gonna, we're gonna try it. So we're trying it at the same time. It's really good. So I don't really taste the chili powder at all. I feel like putting the chili powder in it was almost just like a, like a, so you can say you put chili powder in it. Any kind of a spice from it or like a chili powder taste? No, it's <laughs> He said no and that's good. I really just taste like a lot of, um, not a lot of cinnamon. Like I taste cinnamon, but it's not like overpowering the chocolate. It's really pretty delicious. Doing the half and half was also a good move. If you like your hot chocolate more, the consistency of like Swissness and milk, this might be too thick for you. But if you like a nice, really rich hot chocolate to where you really just need one good mug of it and that's gonna satisfy you, this is an excellent recipe for that. Especially if you topped it with whipped cream, maybe a little bit of chocolate drizzle and some cinnamon. Ooh, that would be good. <laughs> um, I think this is definitely a win. So I think that that's where I'm going to wrap up this video. Um, I'm really happy to have you join me um, in my hot chocolate testing and decorating the um, little rail baskets with all of the Christmas foliage and pics and decor. And it's finally starting to feel a little bit festive around here, I think. Did you like the baskets? I love the baskets. He loved the baskets, that's awesome. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.